I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. Y'all, welcome, welcome, welcome to Where Your Dominion Authority YouTube channel. If you are new, go ahead and like, subscribe, and comment. Even share, 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 share. Don't forget to press the subscribe button. Um, and helping me, you are helping um, a community. Helping a community, you are helping build a nation. And that's on period. Um, it's not about me. It's not about how many subscribers that I have. It's really about me being used by God as his mouthpiece to get the word of God out to his people. And the, the you know, y'all subscribing, y'all are helping. You know, y'all are helping build a community. You know, y'all liking, sharing, and commenting. Y'all are helping build a community. And it's not for me. We're doing this all for the glory of God, right? And if you're not new here, welcome back to my channel. Y'all know how I go over here. We walk in authority, right? Because we are a royal priesthood and we walk in authority under the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, Y'all, I don't know about y'all, but I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. It's not anything that I'm going through personally, really, you know, um, that has me down and out in my spirit, but I just thought that I'd come on here and let you all know that you're going to see a victory in your situation. It don't matter what you're going through. I'm not saying your issues don't matter, but God said you are going to see a victory. I came, the word that I am about to release on today, um, I made the video on yesterday on YouTube. I went to upload the video and it says error uploading video. So I already know it's something that I probably didn't speak about that God wanted me to speak about on today. Or maybe it was just the enemy didn't want the word to get out. Either way it goes, I'm back on today. And guess what? I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to keep trying. I'm not going to stop pressing. I'm not going to stop speaking God's word. It don't matter. YouTube, you didn't upload my video, but you're going to upload it on today. Okay? It's going to be uploaded on today. So I have to make a whole new video. And But it's going to be uploaded today. I got faith in God. Like... And I know that I'm going, I'm doing the will of God because anytime that you're doing the will of God, anytime you're doing the work of the Lord, anytime you're walking in purpose, anytime you're being obedient, that there may be an in interception. It may be something that come your way to try to hinder and block what it is that you are doing, but you're doing it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And guess what? Nothing can hinder or block what you're doing because guess what? You're serving the master. So what the enemy thought, mm, he tried it. But guess what? I'm here and I'm back, right? So the message that I am coming with, I don't even know how to title this. Like I'm trying to come up with more creative ways to title my videos. But really, it just be titles that God gives me. Like So in this title, I really don't have no concrete title right now in my mind. But I've been thinking that the word will come to you how to or how do you possess the promise how do you invest in the promise like this is what the word is about i'll be coming from jeremiah chapter 32 from the new king james version um i'm going to read i'm going to read verse 6 through 15, but I'm going to give you a backlog of verse 1 through 5, right? So, in Jeremiah 32, Jeremiah was locked up in prison, right? He was locked up in the courts of Zedekiah, which was the um king at that time. I believe he was the king, not the judge, but the king, whatever you want to call it, like, you know. Um, 
and he was locked up in the courts of Zedekiah's home. He was locked up in prison, and beforehand, Jeremiah had spoke a word. He um, spoke a prophecy over Jeremiah and over the um, city of Jerusalem, really, you know, the children of Israel, and told them that, you know, they were going to be captive. So, basically, Jeremiah was asking him, why did he speak? Because the words that he spoke over Jeremiah, he said, and this was the Lord giving him this word. And Zedekiah had some questions, right? So, in verse 3, they were being, God was really sun, summoning them to be held, led away to captivity, to the city of, um, to Babylon. But the captivity, the process of them being led over to captivity was held because they had got word that the Egyptian army was coming over to do their thing. You know, they was about to go to war. They was going to fight or whatever like that. So they had to put place captivity on hold so that they can prepare for the Egyptian army. So at this point of time, Israel was still in their own city in Jerusalem, but they knew that any day now they would be being led to captivity into the um, hands of um, Babylon, into the hands of um, Nebuchadnezzar, right? So at this moment, at this time, while they were waiting, they were being sieged. You know, they were under siege by the Egyptians, their army, right? And at that time, while they were raid, waiting, Jeremiah, he was still locked up in the in the king's court, which was Zedekiah. Zedekiah asked him, why did Jeremiah speak this particular prophecy, right? So in verse 3, it says, For Zedekiah, king of Judah, had shut him up, saying, why do you prophesy and say, thus says the Lord, behold, I will give this city into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall take it. And Zedekiah, king of Judah, shall not escape from the hand of the Chaldeans, but shall surely be delivered into the hand of king of Babylon, of the king of Babylon, and shall speak with him face to face and see him eye to eye. Then he shall lead Zedekiah to Babylon, and there he shall be until I visit him. So this was Jeremiah basically prophesying and telling Zedekiah, hey, look, this is what's going to happen, thus says the Lord, right? So, and that's what it looked like nowadays. It looks like, well, I'm not even going to say it looks like, but this is basically what's going to happen. Like, it's some things that's coming our way, USA, that's going to happen, right? And no one knows it but the but the ones who God has revealed to them the intricate details of what's going on, right? And so Jeremiah, the prophet, was being used by God to let the king know, hey, God is going to deliver you into the hands of the Babylonians. And when he does that, we're going into captivity, you know. You know, the city of Jerusalem is going to go into captivity. And it's just what it is, what it is, right? So then Jeremiah responded in verse 6 is what I'm going to start with. In verse 6 to 15, he responded and said, The word of the Lord came to me saying, Now Jeremiah is responding into a place of response, right? So when someone asks you a question, you have to respond in a in a in a in a in a mind state of response. So this is Jeremiah responding back to Zedekiah saying, This is why I told you this. When God told me to speak this to you, this is how I know this was God who told me, because when he gave me that word to speak to you, he also gave me another word for myself, right? So in verse six it says, Jeremiah said. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Behold, Hanamel, the son of Shalom, your uncle, will come to you saying, Buy my field, which is in Anathoth, for the right of redemption is yours to buy it. Then Hanamel, my uncle's son, came to me in the court of the prison, according to the word of the Lord, and said to me, Please buy my field that is in Anathoth which is in the country of Benjamin, for the right of inheritance is yours, and the redemption yours. Buy it for yourself. 
Then I knew that this was the word of the Lord. So I bought the field from Hanamel, the, the son of my uncle who was in Anathoth, and weighed out the money, 17 shekels of silver. And I signed the deed and sealed it. I took witnesses and I weighed the money on the scales. Verse 11. So I took the purchase deed, both that was was sealed according to the law and custom, and that which was open. And I gave the purchase deed to Baruch, the son of Neriah, the son of Messiah, in the presence of Hanamel, my uncle's son, and in the presence of the witnesses who signed the purchase deed before all these, the Jews who sat in the court of the prison. Then I charged Baruch before them, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, take these deeds, both this purchase deed, which is sealed, and the deed which is open, and put them in an earthen vessel that they may last many days. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, houses and fields and vineyards shall be possessed again in this land. So there are so many points that God want me to hit on. And I just pray that I'm able to deliver and able to convey the word that God has given me. Right. So before I go any further, I just wanted to get the word to y'all. So I'm going to go ahead and go into prayer. And then I'm going to get into the meat of the word. Dear God, Heavenly Father God, Most Precious Father God, the one and only Father God, God, the Creator Father God, the author and the finisher of our faith, the, the just, the Holy One, the Anointed One. Oh, God, we just thank you for today, God. We thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to see yet another day, God. God, for us to get into your word, Father God, and to hear what thus says the Lord. God, we are here. God, we are ready. We are open, God. And God, we're asking that you would speak to your servants, God. God, even through me, God. God, I just thank you, God, that you would use me as your vessel, Father God. God, that you would equip me, thoroughly equip me with your word, Lord God. God, because it is for man that we be made complete father god so that we are thoroughly equipped for every good and perfect work when it comes to your word god so i thank you for using me as your vessel father god and i just pray and ask father god not just for my sins but for the sins of the community god of royal dominion authority father god the sins of the nation lord god god that we repent right now god and if we've done anything, said any done, or thought anything that were not like you, Father God, we ask for forgiveness, Father God. God, that you would empty us out, Lord God, in order, God, to be filled again and made whole on today, God, with your word that you are bringing forth right now, God. And we even thank you in advance for forgiveness, Father God. And God, I decrease, God, while you increase, Lord God. And I just ask that it be none of me, God. Even while I decrease, God, I, I decrease to the most minimum, Father God, to the minute lord god and it'll be none of me all of you lord god holy spirit take the lead do what you do in the name of jesus christ amen so in verse 6 jeremiah is responding to zedekiah saying the god told me to tell you this and he also told me this right so he's telling zedekiah that god if you look at verse 6 if y'all look at verse 6 with me um it says, and Jeremiah said, the word of the Lord came to me saying. So Jeremiah is saying that the word of the Lord came to me. The spirit of God, the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ came to Jeremiah and spoke to him. So not only did Jeremiah receive a word, but Jeremiah heard a word and the word was Jesus. Jesus came to him directly. I don't know who this is for, but the Lord is saying that he came to your situations plenty of times. Did you not hear him? Were you not listening when he came and spoke to you? When he came and spoke that word into your situation, did you not hear him? Right? Maybe it was just one time. Maybe it was three or six times. But the word of the Lord came to you saying what? See, Jeremiah was able to grasp, he was able to behold what the Lord came to him and said. And he was saying that the Lord came to him and spoke to him and told him. Right? 
that, hey, your cousin, Hannah Mill, the son of Hannah Mill, your cousin, is going to come to you and tell you something. And this is how you're going to know that it is from me because the very thing that I am speaking to you, I'm going to send the man of God in physical form to come to you and let you know the same very thing that I'm speaking to you in the spirit right now. Let me ask this question. How many of y'all have heard the word of the Lord tell you something or speak something in your life or tell you to do something? I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. How many times in y'all life have the Holy Spirit came to y'all and spoke a word to y'all and said, this is what it is. And when you see it, know that it's me. How many times have that happened? And we gave God thanks or we just either let it go over our head and we're still asking God for confirmation after confirmation. I've done that plenty of times. I still do that sometimes, you know. But God is saying, will you, how will you respond when I come to you with the word? Will you respond? Will you even hear me? Will you even notice it's me when I come to you with the word, right? So, who? Like, verse 6 is so prophetic to me. I think I need to read it one more time before I move on. It says, and Jeremiah said, the word of the Lord came to me, saying. So, the spirit of the Lord came to Jeremiah and spoke to him. So, some of us need to really, really find out who in our ear. Is it us in our own ear? Is it the, the voice of the enemy in our own ear? Is it the voice of the people around us in our own ear? Is it the voice of the people in our ear that's keeping us from hearing from God? When God give us instructions, right? So in verse 7, he says, Behold, Hanamiel, the son of Shalom, your uncle will come to you. And he's saying this. First, he's saying that the Lord came to him and said, Behold. The Lord, the, 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 behold, the son of Shalom, your uncle, the son of Shalom, which is his cousin, his kinfolk, will come to him and he will say this. So he's telling you, not only am I telling you what this person going to come and do, but I'm telling you what they're going to come and say to you. So the word that God is speaking in this very hour to his people, because He's only going to speak the word to the ones that's been called and chosen because the ones that the other nations, they're not hearing him. So he's using us to speak his word to the nations before the people as witnesses now. Right? Because the Holy Spirit first got to bear witness of the word. So this is the Holy Spirit speaking. So the Holy Spirit saying, when this person, when I send this person to you, this is what this person going to say. The same is that thing I'm telling you. This person in the flesh, your cousin, is going to come and tell you the same exact thing, right? So, in verse um, 8, it says, Then my uncle's son came to me in the court of the prison, according to the word of the Lord, and said to me. So, the word has become flesh. Now, the man of God, which is the, God, the, the man that God chose to come to Jeremiah and speak the same thing that the Lord had spoke to him already previously, right? This is like a confirmation and is also instructions as well. So who is going to receive the confirmation from the Lord? Who is going to first hear the spirit of the Lord speak to their spirit? Secondly, who's going to, who's going to receive the word? First, you got to hear the word. Then you got to receive the word. Then you got to do what the word is telling you to do in the manner that is telling you to do it. Right? So here comes the man of God coming in physical form to confirm what the word of God has already told Jeremiah, right? So it's saying that his cousin told him, please buy my field that is in Anathoth, which is in the country of Benjamin, for the right of inheritance is yours. So this is his cousin telling him, your time has come. For you to gain your rightful inheritance because it's yours. Yeah, you're going to have to buy it. Yeah, it was my field first before it was yours. But it was your field all along because you inherited inherited, You inherited this field down through the family. And you're next up. 
to receive it. Nobody else has got this feel after me but you, Jeremiah. So I need you to get your money up. I need you to take your money and invest in this field because now it's yours. So God is saying to whoever listening, it's time for you to start investing. Some, some, some things not going to take money, but it's going to take your spiritual money, your spiritual down payment. It's going to take your, your faith. It's going to take your time. It's going to take your sweat equity. It might take some tears from you, but guess what? It's all for the glory of God. It's, it's, it's all for you to receive your rightful inheritance and what the Lord promised you. This land was promised to Jeremiah. It was his inheritance. He got this through the legacy, right? So this land was already promised to him. All he had to do was get his money up and get, get it popping, right? He already had the money. God had already blessed him. So I don't know who this word is for, but God already blessed you with whatever you need to possess your promise. God has already blessed you with what you need to invest in your promise. God has already blessed you with what you need to walk into your promise, whatever the promise is that God has given you to possess. <laughs> the tools God has given you the strategies God has given you the tools God has given you the coping mechanisms God has given you the secrets God has given you the mysteries to what he's he's promised you God has placed you in position now it's time for you to start investing it's time for you to start walking in it it's time for you to start claiming it it's time for you to start speaking it see for me I've been free for six years so freedom for me, it looked good on me. People is noticing my freedom. And it's because I went from glory to glory. It's because I went from faith to faith. It's because I went from unbelief to belief. It's because I, I went from speaking it in my mind to speaking it out loud into the atmosphere. It because, it, it, it's because I went from being an introvert to an extrovert. Okay? And I'm still learning. I'm still walking in this thing. I'm still living in this thing. But guess what? Each of us has a promise that's attached to our name. But if you're not ready to invest in your promise, then what you here for? What are you here for? Right? God said, now it's the time because what's about to come? Is y'all not following me? In Jeremiah 32, they was about to be led into captivity. Right? But verse 15 God spoke to Jeremiah and says, For thus says the Lord of hosts, The God of Israel, houses and fields and vineyards shall be possessed again in this land. So we're about to walk in a thing. And the unbelievers, the unrighteous, the wicked, the evil, the nations, the Gentiles who don't believe, all, the, all of them are not going to be able to possess their promise because they don't believe. They're not going to be able to walk into their promise because they are not servants of the Most High God. Because they don't have the faith that we have. God is saying it's time to amp up our faith. It's time to really believe the word of the Lord that came to us and spoke to us a thing. Right? The Lord told me two years ago that I was going to get married. Two years ago. He told me to start preparing for marriage. This was two years ago. You think a person like me being two years ago, be woe out by night and be stressed out because I'm not married. No, I still have joy because I have patience. See, some people, they need some patience to walk into their promise. Some people need patience to, in order to possess their promise, in order to really start investing in that one thing or that five or six things that God said that is theirs. But they have to do a specific thing. We have to take heed to the instructions that God has given us. In verse 6, the man of God said that the word of the Lord came to him and spoke. First, we got to hear the word of the Lord. We got to know when the Lord come and speak, we got to know it's the Lord. See, one thing about the devil, he's not going to tell you something that's in alignment with God. And if he does, 
it's going to be counterfeit. It's not going to be the real thing. It's going to be something that look like it's well lit, but it actually comes from a place of darkness. So the enemy is not going to come and tell you something that you can reap the benefits of the kingdom of God from. The enemy, it wasn't the enemy that told me to start preparing for marriage. Because guess what? When two walk together, that means they are in agreement with what kingdom says, with what heaven says. I know God told me to prepare for my husband. But I didn't start telling people until like two or three months ago. Because I know he's near. Whoever he is, I know he's coming. He's very near. Like, I don't know who he is. And guess what? I'm smiling and I'm happy and I have joy because I believe the word of God. Right? It goes back to Jeremiah 6 and 7. The word of the Lord came to me and said, right? And then in verse 7, he said what the, he said, he said what he said. People out here talking about, I said what I said and they making it a social media trend and they lying. They ain't say what they said because if they said what they said, they'll be walking in vision. They'll be walking in purpose. You will see fruit coming from their life and you don't see nothing. And that's another thing. We got to stop going on along with these trends. Because it's causing people to be blind for real. It's call it, causing them to walk in error. It's causing them to go down a rabbit hole. It, and it is not cute. Christians too. You leave that stuff up to the world, but it's not cute for Christians to be all doing it. It's one thing to have fun. Yeah. And I'm not saying to continue to be uptight all your life. I'm not saying that either. But what I'm saying is it's time for us to stop trying to do what the world doing. Because these trends that they doing is not even cute for real. You can see, you see everybody following each other. It's time for us to make up our own trends. It's time for us to make our own waves. It's time for us to really step up and really hear what God is speaking to us and do what God is saying do, right? So, in verse 8, it says that um, his cousin told him to buy, buy the field because the inheritance was his. So that means Jeremiah waited his whole lifetime, however old he was, he waited up until that moment to possess the land. And some of us been waiting a while, but guess what are you putting in the work? Are you using your faith? Put it in the work by your faith, through your faith. Are you really walking the walk? Are you living the lifestyle that you need to live in order to get what God promised you? Are you walking the tight rope? It's not easy, but guess what? You're going to reap benefits that the people in the world are not going to be able to reap. Because they're being followers and not leaders. And it look like they're leading, but they're just being followers. People in the world, they follow after each other and say they set in trends, but they're following after each other. It's time for us to set our own trend and stand out. And the word of God, it says, come out from among them, right? So... And, and Jeremiah said that his cousin told him that the redemption is his. So God is saying he's trying to redeem us. He is sending somebody to redeem us. But will we accept the redemption? Will we accept the salvation? Will we accept the freedom when God put it in our faith, face? When God put freedom in our face, will we accept it? When he write redemption on our forehead, will we look like we've been redeemed? Or we will we continue to look like we're in bondage with the world? Because they living in bondage. They are slaves to the master of the worldly system. Whew, that's a whole nother word. So God is saying that the inheritance is yours. The redemption is yours. And you can buy it for yourself. You can purchase this for yourself because it's already yours. All you got to do is give what you need to give in order to possess it. When you go to the store and... You get what you need from the store. There's a transaction being made when you give them what was yours. You just went to the store to pick it up. That's all. God told you you needed a tablecloth for your table. And you know it was a specific store that you saw that tablecloth in. That you know that when you go to that store, you're going to get that tablecloth because of their quality. Because you like it for whatever reason that you buy that tablecloth. But you know it needs to be put on your table because God told you you needed that tablecloth. Right? 
But you know, when you go to the store, that there has to be a transaction being made in order to possess whatever it is that God promised you that you need in your life, in your household, whatever it is, in your ministry, whatever it may be, your business, whatever it is, your relationship, whatever it is, your job, whatever it may be, your car, it still has to be a transaction in order for you to get the product of the byproduct, right? A transaction has to be made. So God is saying, go and purchase it. Go and purchase this thing that I promised you. And when you purchase it, you're making an investment. Go and buy it. Sis, go and buy the hair so that you can start up your hair business. Bro, go and buy the barbershop tools. Go and buy the clippers. Go and buy the barber chairs. Go and buy the building. <sighs> go and do it. Go and apply for that job. Go and begin to pray for your husband. Go and begin to pray for your womb, that your womb be open so that you're able to bear children. Go and do it. Whatever it is that God told you that he promised you, go start investing. What you put your money on, what you put your mouth to, what you speak upon is what will be birthed in this season. That's what God just, that's what I just heard. What you put your money on, because people like to say, Put your money where your mouth is. Put your mouth where your money is or whatever it is. What you put your mouth and your money on, that's your investment. Right? So, in verse 9, it says, So I bought the field from Hanamiel, my cousin, which is the son of my uncle who was in Anathoth. So he bought his field in his hometown, in his homeland, which is the land of Benjamin. Anybody know about the tribes? Benjamin is what tribe? I'm not going to tell y'all because I need y'all to get in y'all word, right? But he went and bought the land from his tribe. See, God is even speaking now and saying that now is the season where people will know who they really are in me. Because a lot of people saying that God ain't real. A lot of people saying the Bible ain't real. But God is saying this is the year that people will know their tribe. <laughs> Whew, God. This is the year where you will learn your true history. And that and, and you won't be listening to that jibber jabber talking about the white man. This is just a white man's book. We serving a white man God. God said this is the year where he will reveal to you who you really are. Right? His cousin came to him and told him, go ahead and get this land because back in our hometown. I don't know who this is for, but somebody been trying to figure out who they are, where they came from, who are their people, where they really, who they really are. God is saying, this is the year when I re reveal your true identity to you and me. This is the year where I will let you know where you came from, who you came from. Because you came from a place, but I need you to know in this season who you are because I'm tired of you sitting down not knowing your true identity. Because once you, once you figure out your identity, that's when you figure out your position in the kingdom. When I figured out my identity, that's when I figured out my position. When I figured out my position, that's when I start walking heavy, baby. I don't play with nobody. I don't care who you is. I'm not going to play with you. I'm not even going to play with myself. So... Don't take it personal. And that's on what? Period. Don't take it personal. You, you, we can't be playing with nobody no more. It's time to stop playing. Because guess what? The more you play with people, the more the enemy going to play with you. So he's saying he bought the field from his cousin, right? He weighed out the money, 17 shekels of silver. God is saying, when you get ready to weigh out the money, for your investment, when you get to the way the pros and cons of investing in your business, of accepting this job offer, of walking in ministry, of doing this girl head, you trying to figure out if the money going to be right, if it's coming from a right place, because all money ain't good money, right? All ideas and good ideas. All great ideas are not great ideas. All good investments are not sound investments. God is saying, when you get ready to weigh out the pros and the cons of what you're walking in you're going to be weighing in the balance but i'm going to help you weigh in the balance in today's world today's society what's going on in the world baby god is weighing in the balance in our situations 
and the people in the land and the different social injustices, the racism, the hatred, the violence. God is saying, stop, stop worrying about the pandemic. Stop worrying about people getting killed. That happened, this, that all that happened in the Bible. Like why I'm not saying don't be, don't have a heart, but God is saying it's time to put your feelings and your emotions to the side because your feelings and your emotions is what gets you in trouble. It gets you off focus. It gets you off track. You're not going to be able to hear from me if you always in your feelings and emotions. I'm not going to be able to speak to you because your feelings and your emotions going to be blocking everything I'm trying to tell you. It's going to be blocking the direction I'm trying to put you in. Get out your feelings and your emotions. That's what God is saying. Like too many people and it be our own people. Just like people be saying it be our own kind. It is. It be our own people worried about what they can't control. You can't control killings. You can't control death. But what you can control is, is your own actions. You can tr control the prayers that you send up to the heaven. With, to heaven, you can control your attitude that you have towards these type of things that's going on globally in the world, and you can control what you do about it on your end. Get out your feelings and your emotions because it's time to weigh in a balance. That's what God is saying. You finna get ready. You finna get ready to walk in your promise. It's time to weigh in the balance. And He said a lot of people are coming up short in their feelings. A lot, a lot of people are coming up short with the way they live. A lot of people are coming up short in their lifestyle. A lot of people not living and measuring up. And people finna get cut down and chopped down. When I was listening to worldly music. See, I was a straight thug. It may not look like it, but I was. I was never girly girl. I just started being like girly girl. I just started wearing heels. I just started wearing skirts. I just started wearing dresses. I like that kind of stuff. Give me a pair of jeans and, and the latest Air Force Ones. Period. And the latest flyest t-shirt to match with my arm um, shoes. And baby, we trapping and thugging. All 2020. We trapping and thugging, not 2020, because I was saved in 2020, but all 2000. Baby, we trapping and thugging. Like, so when I used to listen to worldly music, I used to like my worldly music chopped and screwed. Right? Chopped and screwed. Slowed down, all that. Chopped and screwed. Like, straight thugging. Trap music too. Chopped and screwed. Period. <laughs> and God is saying, some people finna get chopped and screwed. Some people think they're going in one direction and they're really going in the total opposite direction. Some people think they're living the lifestyle because they, they have a good way of covering up, but they're really going in the opposite direction. Some people think they finna really elevate and excel and they're going to get chopped down. God said, because I am weighing in the balance. People worrying about the wrong thing and it's time to keep our eyes on the prize, which is what? The promise, which is what the purpose and the will of God, not of ourselves. Not of ourselves. It's not of ourselves, right? So in 10, he said he signed the deed, he sealed it, he took the witnesses, and he weighed the money on the scales. So when you're going through the process of receiving your land, your promise, whatever land God told you, it don't have to be physical real estate. It don't have to be physical territory. Because when your spiritual territory, your spiritual promise become flesh, it's going to end up being physical territory. It's going to end up being a piece of territory that God gave you and promised you. And nobody can, can step in it unless God allow it. Because when you walk into the new dimensions... Whatever territory you're operating in, whatever office you're operating in, whatever promise you're operating in, whatever seeds you're planting, whatever you're investing in, whatever you're speaking in, speaking in the atmosphere, and God allows it to manifest, God said, ain't nobody going to be able to walk in that. Ain't nobody going to be able to take that from you unless I allow it. And God saying he is raising up some people that's going to make the process. Huh. He raising up some people that's finna make the team. He raising up some people that's finna be all the way lined up and people gonna be wondering how. How Sway, how? How Ash, how? How Lord, how? How God, how? And they saying you either give them the tools 
or you either keep it pushing because I've been sending my prophets, I've been sending my evangelists, I've been sending my real preachers and teachers, my real people after my heart, after my word to download this information and they still wavering. I don't need my people to be perfect, but I need them to be obedient, right? So when we think about the steps Jeremiah took when he heard the, the word of God come to him, He wrote the vision down. He wrote he wrote the blue, the the blueprint down. He wrote it down, y'all. Then he signed it and sealed it. Then he called the witnesses, the people who will be there to testify on your behalf. When God bless you, when God take you from glory to glory, it's only a few people that will be there to testify on your behalf that will not taint your gift. They're not going to taint your gift. They're not going to taint what God has placed in your hands. They're not going to throw no dirt on it. When I say taint, I'm saying they're not going to throw no dirt on it. They're not going to tamper with it. They're not going to make it look bad. They're not going they're going to be truthful. They're going to be honest and pure just as you are. When you begin to line up and make the investment in the property that God has said is yours. The inheritance, the legacy that you are getting from the Lord Jesus Christ that the Lord God has promised you, right? God said, when you do this, you write that, you write down that transaction. You make sure that you hold on to that blueprint. You sign and seal the deed. You write your name on it. Sign it. That's your signature. You write your name on it. You seal it. You call your witnesses who you know that are trustworthy, who can testify on your behalf of the glory of God. And then number four, it says, Jeremiah paid the price. He weighed in the balance. <laughs> he weighed in the balance of his investment. He paid the price on his investment. Jeremiah was shut up in prison because he prophesied what God told him to prophesy. So you're going to be persecuted. But guess what? You still pay, paying a price. You putting down your spiritual down payment. And some people are going to have to put down a physical down payment. Some people are going to have to put down a down payment on, on their building. That's an investment on their on they ministry. Like whatever it may be, God is saying you're paying the price. You're investing. You're putting down your down payment. And before you did that, people talked about you. People spit on you. People did all this kind of stuff. They doubted you. They said whatever they wanted to say. They kicked you. They put dirt on your name. They um didn't believe who you was. They said that they was going to support you, and they didn't. It don't even matter no more. God said you paid the price, right? And then number five, God is saying store it up. God is saying store it up. Store it up. Because... In verse 13, he said he charged Baruch. Baruch was the one who wrote down his prophecy. Somebody, God is saying even too, even some people on, on levels where they're going to get other people to write their plans out for them. They ain't even going to have to do it. See me, I had to write down my vision. But now I have people on my team that's helping me fulfill my vision. That's helping me write out the rest, what I need to write out. And they're helping me on my journey. Those are my witnesses. Right. So in verse 13, Jeremiah said, then I charged Baruch before them saying, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, take these deeds, both this purchase deed, which is the sealed deed and take the one that is open and put them in earthen vessels that they may last many days. So these deeds were the deeds that he got when he purchased this land. When Jeremiah went and got his land that was rightful, his, his inheritance that he was redeemed when he got this land that was his. It say in scripture that he this land was his by inheritance, by legacy, by inheritance. And by him inheriting this land, he became redeemed. He became free. He seen freedom. He, he became free and it became his. So he told the man of God, take these vessels, the one that's sealed up, right? So in 
because I have a study Bible and in the study Bible, number five, they stored up the copies in vessels, right? I'm going to get to that part. But before they stored it up, they sealed a copy and then they had a duplicate copy, which is an open copy. And that's called duplicate. So the first copy, they sealed it so that it wouldn't be tampered with. That was like a personal possession. That was something that Jeremiah was going to hold on to, which was the word of God. I'm going to seal it up and I'm going to hold on to it, right? The second copy was an open copy, which was a duplicate. Anybody can see this. If I needed to take this to open up my business to get a business loan, I can take them this copy and they can read it and they can verify it. And they can say, okay, boom, she got the paperwork she need to have. I can use the open copy, the duplicate copy as proof of purchase. Proof of the investment, proof of the down payment, proof of the blood, sweat, and tears, proof of the sweat equity, proof, proof. It's a testimony. It's proof. Not proof, but proof. <laughs> Lord, Lord, teach me how to talk. Sorry, y'all, proof. And that's what Jeremiah is saying. He's saying, but the sealed copy, don't let nobody touch that. That's your seal from the Lord God. Don't open it. For, you, ain't no reason you need to open the sealed copy when I gave you a duplicate. So he told Baruch to put them in vessels that they may last longer. So I don't know who this is for, but God is saying the word, the promise, the seed that I have given you that you've sown in good ground, whatever it is. I keep saying investment because we're walking into our promise promise and it's an investment that we have to make it's a down payment we have to make because the promise is so great the promise is so big on our lives it's big and god is saying because of the magnitude of the promise because of the value of that thing we have to put it excuse me in vessels so that it will last longer see when i say vessels Physically, I think about a bottle that you can put a lid on and that you can store, store up on the shelf or the refrigerator. But spiritually, the vessels is us, within us. We have to put that word, that promise deep down on the inside of us. So when it's time for that promise to sprout up, when, when it's time for us to take the deeds out of the vessel, it can sprout up and it can spring up and it can cause increase. Because God said we plant. And we water, but God gives the increase. I spoke on that two videos ago. And I believe 2 Corinthians chapter 3. I spoke on it. We plant and we water, but God gets the increase, right? So it's time for us to store up whatever it is that God has told us to store up in this season. And we have to put that stuff up. And we have to continue to build on it. And when it's time to let that stuff out of the vessels, it's going to come out whole. It's going to come out full. It's going to come out plenty. It's going to come out the right thing because we've done the right things that we needed to do in the actual process of us making that investment and, and possessing our inheritance. Because when we possess a thing, when we possess the promise, that means we are walking in freedom. Some people still in bondage. Some people believe and still in bondage. Some people say they're walking in faith, but they're still in bondage. That don't even make no sense. So God saying, what investments are you making? How will you make these investments? Right? What type of investments will you make in this season? How are you going to go about making the investments? Will you hear the word of the Lord when it comes to you? Will you hear the word of the Lord when it comes to you? Because guess what, y'all? They was finna be led into captivity. This was right before their captivity. A few chapters after chapter 32, they went into captivity. Right then, they were under siege by the Egyptians. But the children of Israel were being led into captivity a few chapters after this. So God is not only sending a warning, but he's also sending an encouraging word. Like the warning is the people that's not investing, 
it's hellfire, it's doom, and it's, it is what it is. No, this is not a doom message, but for the people who are not investing, who are not storing up the promises of God, y'all better get ready. So I hope this word encourage you to do what you need to do and get on your A game. Because for the remnant, in, in, in verse 15, it says that Jeremiah said that the Lord of hosts, the Lord of hosts meaning the Lord who inhabits his people, his people. Everybody don't accept God. Everybody don't accept the Lord. But it says that the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. See, you got to first know the God that you're serving. See, I serve the God of Israel because I know who I am. I know where I come from. I know my inheritance, right? I know that I've been redeemed. So it's time for us to walk in it. And when we walk in it, in verse 15, it says, Houses and fields and vineyards shall be possessed again in this land. And if you know anything about the Babylonian captivity, you know for sure that when the Israelites, when the children of Israel were held captive all those years by um, Babylon, they end up coming out. And they ended up possessing these things. But in my study Bible, it says that the word of the prophets weren't just for the ancient days. It's for the future. Who are the future? We are the future. So we can't get hung up and say, oh, that just happened back then. And prophecy don't, you know, certain things in prophecy was only for back then. That's a lie. It's time for us to really wake up and rise up and know that the promises of God are yes and amen. God don't have to say yes and amen. It's us that has to say yes and amen to God. God is the promise keeper. It's us that has to say yes to the promise and amen to be in agreement with what the promise keeper has spoke. I spoke a word at church. I ministered a word at church about a month ago on a Thursday night. And I asked the people of God. I said, if the question, I said, no, I said, if the answer came to you, how would you respond? If the answer came and asked you a question, how, how would you respond? And it was, it was based on Ezekiel dry bones, Ezekiel 37 in the dry bones. Because in Ezekiel 37, God told Ezekiel to prophesy to the dry bones, right? And he told Ezekiel what to say to the dry bones. God not only told Ezekiel to prophesy to the dry bones, but before that, before he told Ezekiel to prophesy and before he told Ezekiel what to prophesy to the bones, he asked Ezekiel a question. He asked Ezekiel a question. In the question, he asked Ezekiel, son of man, will these dry bones live? And guess what Ezekiel said? God, only you know. Right? So if the answer came to you and asked you a question, how would you respond? And then we go back. It takes me back to Jeremiah 32 and 6, where Jeremiah said that the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah and spoke. So when the word of God, when the spirit of the Lord God comes to us and speak, because the word is spirit before it's flesh, the word became flesh. The word is spirit before it came flesh. So if the spirit of the Lord, the word is God, the word is the Lord Jesus Christ. The word is the Lord Jesus Christ. It tells you that in John chapter one. The word came and spoke to Jeremiah. Jesus Christ himself came and spoke to Jeremiah. And told him, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to send a man of God to you. And this is what's going to happen. This is what you're going to do. And this is how you're going to do it. I'm going to send a man of God to you to prophesy to you. See, the word of God had already prophesied to Jeremiah. 
But when he sent the man of God to Jeremiah in flesh, that was God confirming his word, what he had already spoke to Jeremiah. And it was up to Jeremiah to respond. So God is saying in this season, how will we respond? I released a word on yesterday. I released a video on yesterday. And in the end of my video, I began to sing a song called My Response by Phil Thompson, not knowing that I would be asking the same question to you all about your response, right? But see, God is a God of the prophetic. God knows before we do. See, we only know in part, we only prophesy in part. And I'm speaking in the sense of the office of prophecy, the office of the prophetic. We only know in part and we only speak in part. So yesterday, even though I know I was going to drop this word yesterday because I tried to drop it yesterday and, and YouTube did not upload it. It was an uploading error. But I didn't know I would be asking y'all this question. So it's the reason why my video did not upload on yesterday, yesterday because God needed me to come back on today to ask you all. Because it's not me asking y'all this. It's the spirit of the Lord asking y'all if the answer came to you how will you respond and that's something that you can ponder on but don't take too long because god is still looking for a response he's still looking for action because god is love and we all know that love is an action word so god is looking for action god is no longer he never I ain't going to say no longer. God was never someone to. God was never the type of God that was content with us sitting on our behind. Sitting on ideals. He's never been that type of God. Now, if you're serving Lucifer, Satan. If you're serving him, he would love for you to sit on your rear end. Because why? You're not producing. He he would love that. But the type of God that we serve, Jehovah, Jireh, which is the God that provides. He's saying that since I am love, and love is an action word, I am a God of action. I am a God of movement. That means I need you to be moving because you are heirs with Christ. So when the Lord moves, I need you to move. When the Lord speak, I need you to speak. When the Lord go, I need you to go. Because the promised land is not going to last forever. In other words, we can possess the promised land, but we're still going to see wilderness in our promised land. But how will we respond when that time comes? Because God said even the promised land is temporary. It could last for the rest of our life, the promised land. Let me tell you something. All things are spiritual all things God said the promised land can last for the rest of our lives but it's still only temporary it's what you do with your freedom in your freedom that's what matters so if the answer came to you how would you respond see God is the answer to all things he's the answer God is the answer we don't know all the answers. We don't have all the answers. We don't know everything. God is the answer. And when God comes to you, how will you respond? In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. What are you going to do with your investment? How are you going to invest? Are you going to speak to your investment? Are you going to speak to your promise? That it will spring forth? Are you going to receive the spirit of the Lord when the word comes to you? 
when God send that person to you to speak into your life, are you going to look at them like they stupid and crazy? Or are you going to receive the word? Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, God, I just thank you right now, oh God, God, for releasing your word for your people, Father God. I pray understanding. I pray clarification. I pray confirmation, Lord God. I pray knowledge, wisdom. Father God, whatever it is, Father God, that you need us to grasp a hold on to, God, whatever it is, God, that you need us to behold. Father God, whatever it is, God, that you need for us to set our eyes upon, God, God, to set our ears upon, to set our heart upon, Lord God, God, help us to create that heart posture, Lord God, that we will receive you, Lord God, when you come, God, whatever way that you come, God, that we were, that we will see the sign, God, that we will see the wonders, God, God, when you send them, God, so that we can be able, Lord God, to see the breakthrough miracles, God, that we are waiting for, God, the promise, God, that we are waiting for, God, the land, God, that you said that we would inherit and possess, God, the identity, God, that we will walk in the position, Lord God, that we would take, Lord God, help us, oh God, help us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, God, God, have your way, Father God, God, I pray, Father God, God, that this word, Father God, has sown a seed into good ground, Father God, and not stony, God. I pray that this word, Lord God, has pierced the heart of your people, God. God, in Hebrews 4 and 12, God, you said that your word is living and powerful, God. God, that it is sharper than any two-edged sword, God, piercing even to the divisions of soul and spirit, God. God, even into the joints and marrows, Lord God, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart, Lord God. So my prayer, God, is that your word, God, pierce the hearts of your people, Father God, that will cause them to believe, that will cause them to move, that will cause them to activate, that will cause them to spring forth, that will cause them to sprout up, that will cause them to leap, that will cause the baby in their, in their, in their womb to just move, oh God. That will cause them to write the vision and make it plain, God. That will cause them to run with the vision, God, whatever it may be, Father God. Mm. God, we thank you for your prophets, God. We thank you for Jeremiah, God. We, I thank you. I thank you for Jeremiah 32 and 33. Because it's the promise, God, that you made to your people, God. And we're waiting on the promise, God. God, my prayer on today, God, is while we're waiting on the promise, God, is that we walk in the direction of the promise which is listening to you, Lord Jesus, when you come, when you come and speak that word, that we will listen to your word, that we will take heed and that we will go out and possess what's ours. In the name of Jesus Christ, God, and I bind up and I come up against any principality, any evil force, any spiritual wickedness in high places, any retaliating spirits that will try to come up against this YouTube channel Anybody that is a partaker of your word, Father God, of this word, Father God, that you've allowed me to release, God, I pray that this word will go forth, Lord God, through the airways, God. God, it won't that it won't just reach people in my city, Father God, but it reach people, God, all around the world, Father God. God, that this word, God, that you planted on the inside of me, Father God, will cause a nation to move, God. Mm. It will cause a people to know their purpose, God. Because that is the goal, God, for people to walk in their purpose, in the will of God. And God, we just thank you right now in advance, God. And we put a praise on it, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, God. We plead the blood of Jesus right now over this word, over our lives, over the promise that you have made, over our ministry, over our job, over our finances, over our families, over our friends and loved ones, even over our enemies, Father God, that they will turn to you, God, that they will turn and repent, God. And turn from their ways, God, even us, God, because we are not perfect, God. God, there's some things in our life, God, that we need to turn from, oh, God. So we pray, Father God, God, that your will will be done, God. God, in earth as it is in heaven, Father God. On earth as it is in heaven, Lord God. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I love y'all. Have a great day. I have to get back to work, but I pray that you all receive this word in the way that the Lord has given it to me. I pray that you all pray for discernment, for wisdom, for um, revelation, um, because this word has been an impartation.
God just said, I've imparted my word. I've planted my seed. So I pray that this word is a revelation for you. And I pray that God is able to manifest whatever he needs in your life to get the promise going, to get you walking in your promise. In the name of Jesus Christ, I love y'all. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed day. And remember, speak. Speak to your promise, okay? That's what we do around here. We speak our promise into the atmosphere. We speak affirmations into the atmosphere. And then we watch God go to work. And that's on what? Period. <laughs> I love y'all. Have a great and fruitful day. Be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.